let's get started. Uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. I think some of you have met me before and probably more of you have met me on video. <laughs> And you'll see why. So I'm Jesse. I'm founder and CEO of Create and Learn. Um, I got my PhD from UCRA. By the way, you guys probably saw Dr. Clarenrock earlier. He was um, my professor, my advisor from um, UCRA. So I'm so happy that he's here today. And he might give a talk to you guys as well at some point. Um, so, and then Create and Learn is a program we teach students a lot of uh, different kind of computer science classes. And uh, most of our classes are small group classes. So with that, let me introduce our first speaker, James. And he, uh, I know him for a few years already. We got introduced by a mutual friend. And James uh, graduated from Stanford University and he has worked at Google on the Android team and actually building an app. A lot of you probably have used if you have Android. Actually, if you have an Android phone, I'm pretty sure you have used an app that um, he has built, so, which is super exciting. He has been on the team for probably eight or nine years now. Very experienced. Hey guys, uh, my name is James uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Android. Uh, so, a little bit about me, uh, I am a developer for Google Photos. I work on the Android app, uh, and Google Photos, if any of you guys do not know, is an, a Photos app that's pre-installed on all Android devices, and it backs up your photos for free and allows you to edit photos, share them, print them, do a lot of cool things with them. So check it out if you if you have not done so yet. And it's also on iOS. Uh, as you can see in the photo, I have a golden retriever. Her name is Ella. She is 12 years old, and I love her dearly. And finally, for those of you who are Pokemon fans, my favorite Pokemon is Snorlax, because all he does is eat and sleep all day, and that's an amazing way to live. So let's start with a very general question. What is Android exactly? So on the very base level, Android is a mobile operating system. Uh, if you start up a computer, the first thing you'll do is you'll see a Windows icon or a Mac OS X icon. Um, those are the operating systems that run computers. So on phones, Android and iOS are the equivalent for phones. You'll see an Android icon, the first thing you think, the first thing you do when you boot up, or you'll see an iOS icon. So what exactly does that mean? What does an operating system do? So the main function of an operating system is to make the software and the hardware work together. And in this case, the software is the apps, everything that you know and love about a phone, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and Roblox. And the hardware is the phone itself, everything that you can touch on the phone, the screen, the camera, uh, the microphone. So what an operating system does like Android is it allows an app like Instagram to use the camera. It allows an an app like YouTube to play a video on the screen or use the network to stream the video. And another thing an operating system does is it provides what we call a user interface to allow users to interact with the phone. So you can see on this sample phone here, this is an Android build. Uh, we have these little icons that allow that you can touch in order to launch the app. So basically without Android on the phone, the phone would be pretty much useless. So let me give you a brief history about uh, the history of Android. So Android was started in 2003, which is 17 years ago. That's probably longer than most of you have been alive. And it was started as a startup company called Android Inc. And two years later, in 2005, Google saw the potential of mobile operating systems and they acquired Android for, I think, $50 million. And after a few years of development, in 2008, 
Android finally launched its first phone with the help of T-Mobile. And that phone is the G1, as you can see here. Uh, so the G1 is very different than phones that we see now. Uh, you can see there's a hard keyboard, which is very rare now. There's even a little trackball on the right here. It's kind of like a mouse for a phone that never caught on. And there's also hard buttons for hanging up and calling people, which is also, and, and home as well. Um, so these are things that you, you hardly ever see on phones today. So let me ask you a quick question. How many active Android devices do you think there are in the world? And by devices, I mean everyone has a device, right? So <clears throat> there's uh, two pixels, twos would be two devices. So the answer is 2.5 billion, which is a whole lot of devices. That's basically a third of the world's population. So what was it that made so Android so successful? So it started in uh, 2008, as we said, with the G1. And if you see in this graph, the orange line is uh, the line for Android. And this shows the market share of Android compared to other uh, mobile operating systems. And it's been on a very steady rise for the last 10 years. Uh, and it's right around 80% of all phones now. So that kind of begs the question, why, why did Android become so successful? What makes Android so special? Well, one thing is that Android is open source. So what exactly does open source mean? So for any of you that have programmed, source code is basically the code that you write in order to create an app for a piece of software. So Android, the platform, has its own source code. So then open source means that you're taking this source and you're making it open to the public. You're sharing it with everyone. And that's very different than uh, a lot of products which are closed source, which means they write the code and they keep it private. And the only thing that they show is the app. So they don't show you, if you think of cooking, they don't show you how they made the, the uh, they don't show you how they made a dessert. They actually just show you the dessert. So in Android, they actually show you exactly how everything is made. So here's a short video about the advantages of open source versus closed source. <clears throat> Almost every piece of computer software is created using source code or the technical blueprint that tells a program how to function. When creators release their finished product to the public, they must decide whether to make their software open source or closed source. With closed source software, also known as proprietary software, the public is not given access to the source code, so they can't see or modify it. But with open source software, the source code is publicly available, and programmers can see or modify that code if they desire. Keep in mind that you don't have to read or change any code in order to use an open source product. The vast majority of apps, games, and other popular software are closed source. However, there are open source options for many types of programs. If you want an open source alternative to Microsoft Office, you could use LibreOffice. Instead of using Windows, you can try an open source Linux operating system. Other open source examples include the Firefox web browser and WordPress blogging platform. One of open source's biggest advantages is that it's usually free, though some features and technical support may cost extra. Also, since the code is available to anyone who wants it, public collaboration can find bugs, add features, and improve performance within a relatively short amount of time. With that said, open source software is not perfect. It may not be as user-friendly as closed source software. And if you run into trouble, it may be difficult to find technical support, especially for less popular programs. As for closed source software, it's more likely to be a stable, focused product. And if you need support, customer service is typically easier to access. However, closed source software often costs money. And if it has any bugs or missing features, you'll have to wait on the creator to address the problems. Now that you understand the difference between open and closed source software, you can take advantage of the type that best meets your needs.
GCF Global, creating opportunities for a better life. Okay, so as you can see from that video, there's uh, advantages and disadvantages to open source and closed source software. So the reason uh, Android decided to go open source was, as mentioned in the video, you have a lot of collaborators uh, that are able to access the code and figure out bugs, et cetera. And you have a lot of companies that will adopt your software because it's, it's basically free for them. So there's companies that make Android devices, not just Google, but a whole bunch of other companies that take Android for themselves using the open source software and put it on their devices. So you have companies like Samsung and Motorola and LG. And that's one of the biggest reasons why Android has been so successful in dominating the smartphone market. So with the uh, open source software, we see phones that are developed on Android, but they're hosted on a whole bunch of other devices as well. There's tablets, there's computers, there's televisions. There's also watches, e-readers, cameras, game consoles. There's also apparently a fridge that runs uh, Android, which is pretty interesting. I'd love to see that. So another thing that makes Android special is that uh, Android is always improving. It's always evolving. And basically, a new version of Android comes out once a year. And it's pretty cool. Uh, Google, when they started Android, they decided to name Android versions after desserts. So we started with Cupcake uh, in 2009, and then they went alphabetically, creating a dessert for each letter of the alphabet from there on out. We had Donut, Claire, Froyo, et cetera. Jelly Bean, Kit Kat, a lollipop, which is why Android is holding a lollipop, uh, Marshmallow, all the way to Pi in 2018. And unfortunately, they stopped this practice in 2019. They just called it Android 10. I'd like to think it's because they couldn't find a dessert that starts with Q, but I'm not exactly sure why. And if you're lucky enough to uh, be able to see the Google campus in Mountain View, uh, there's actually statues for all of these desserts. And uh, you can walk around, you can take a look at them. Every time they release a new Android version, they, they built a statue uh, for that dessert. So let me give you just a side-by-side -side comparison of how Android has evolved. So the video on the left is uh, a, a T-Mobile G1, which is the first Android phone created. It's running Android Cupcake, the first version of Android. So the hardware, you have a combination of a touch screen, uh, a trackball for more precision navigation, or it slides open to reveal a QWERTY keypad. Now the beauty of Android is that uh, there's a marketplace which you can download, download any open source application. Here's just a sampling of what you'll get uh, when this device launches. Obviously there will be much more to come. While I'm waiting for the market to upload, I'll show you the window shade. The window shade is all of your notifications in one. So if you get text messages, instant messages, email, downloading of applications, it'll all show up here. So it's kind of like your your personal secretary, if you will. It manages all of your information. And now this is a video from 2018, nine years later. It's a Pixel 2 XL running Android Pie. So I've just updated my Google Pixel 2 XL. So Android Pie does bring with it some design changes, although it's not a night and day difference coming from Android 8 Oreo. If you swap down from the top, you'll notice this does look quite different from before. We've got a white background, blue icons that are enabled, gray ones that aren't. All the icons are round and also color coded to make it a little bit easier to navigate. Other little design tweaks include if you press the volume button, you'll see the graphic pops out next to the button on the screen. And I also really like that it now defaults to the media volume when you press the volume keys. So you no longer accidentally blare out your Spotify music or your YouTube video when you thought you turned it right down. So everything is a little bit more colorful and round, but really the big change in terms of design and UI is with the gestures and also recently used apps. So if you jump into the settings menu, go to system, tap on gestures, and then enable swipe up on home button, 
This basically makes your Android phone feel more like an iPhone X, with just one little pill-shaped icon. Now everything can be controlled with gestures, so if you tap the pill, you go home. If you swipe up from the bottom, you bring up recently used apps, which is also now in a horizontal layout rather than the traditional Android vertical. So you can see actually there's actually quite a few similarities with uh, the way that uh, the first version of Android versus uh, Android Pie, but there's also a lot of differences and a lot of improvements in uh, the rendering, the graphics, uh, the speed, it's so much faster and everything has basically been made into software. There's no more trackball, there's no more hard buttons, there's no more hard keyboard, etc. So how does Android work? Uh, if you break down Android into its base components, the fundamental uh, component of Android is actually Linux. It's uh, when Android was first built, it was built on top of Linux because Linux is open source, just like Android is. It's an operating system that a lot of engineers and developers use, and it's free to use for everyone. So when they first started creating the Android platform, they actually used the Linux system. But the Linux system is not always the most user-friendly or uh, readable. So uh, there's a layer of Java on top. Java is known to be a very readable and very user-friendly language. And as a result of that, the apps on Android are actually written in Java. So what exactly is an app? Some of you may know exactly what an app is, but let's do a quick review. So an app is short for the word application. It's a software program that runs on top of an operating system. So an Android app would therefore be an app that runs on top of Android. And there are about 2.7 million Android apps in the Google Play Store today, which is a huge amount. So Jesse's already asked this uh, before, but name some of your favorite Android apps. Cool. So yeah, there's a ton of apps, games, uh, WhatsApp, uh, TikTok, YouTube, uh, yes, Minecraft. Uh, there's a whole ton of apps to uh, choose from on Android, which makes it so, uh, so fun. So how does an Android app get made? There's a couple things you need. Um, first, you need a computer in order to write code in Java. And once that code is written, it gets compiled and built into an APK file or an Android package file. And after the APK file is built, it gets installed onto the device. And the moment the APK file is installed, you'll see a little icon and you can actually launch it. So when you're launching that file, you're actually launching the APK file. So what are the things mobile apps can do that uh, other desktop apps don't? Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of things that uh, phones can do that are very unique to phones. One is that they can get your location. So Uber and Lyft and Google Maps, they, they can, there's a GPS in the phone that actually allows them to see where you are so they can tell you where to go or they can find a taxi for you. You can obviously take pictures. All phones have cameras. So Instagram, Facebook, TikTok uses the videos. Um, you can take pictures with those apps. You can make phone calls. You can send text messages with WhatsApp, Facebook, Instant Messenger. Uh, you can, it can even answer your questions. So if you, like the Google Assistant app, uh, you can actually ask it a question like, how many fish are there? Or how tall is LeBron James? And they can actually uh, read your voice through the microphone and they can recognize it and they can answer back. And it can also count your steps because there's an accelerometer in the device. An accelerometer is a sensor that detects motion. So when you walk around, uh, you can check how many steps you've taken throughout the day with a Fitbit or a Google Fit app. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. How do you write an Android app? 
So there's a few things you need. First, you'll need a program called Android Studio. So Android Studio is what they call an IDE, uh, an integrated development environment. An IDE is basically an editor for Java. So you guys are probably familiar with book reports and things like that. When you want to write a book report, you launch Microsoft Word or you launch Google Docs. Um, if I want to write a Java program or if I, if I want to write an Android app, I'll launch Android Studio. The second thing you'll need is you'll need a phone to test on, an Android phone. But you can also use an emulator. So Android Studio uh, includes an emulator which is basically a phone, but it lives on your computer. So it does everything a phone does, it's just that it's software and it is on your computer. And finally, it's hard to stress this enough, you're gonna need a lot of time and you're gonna need a lot of practice. I've done Android for most of my adult life and I'm still scratching the surface about my knowledge of Android. Uh, there's so much to learn, uh, but, once you learn it, it can be really, really rewarding and fun. So here's a short video on the basics of an Android app. The first piece of an app is the layout, which describes how the app should look. In Android, layouts are created by combining different types of views. At its most basic, a view is just a rectangular area on the screen. But there are views that contain text, views that act as buttons, and even views for holding other views. And by combining all these different types of views, we can make pretty much anything. The other piece of an app is the activity. You can think of the activity as the code behind a layout. It's where you tell your buttons what to do. Getting back to the code. So in Android, there are views. So a view is a component on the screen. So I have a screenshot of Google Photos on the right here. Um, this has all types of views. There's an image view you can see right here. There's a text view. And there's a button up here which allows you to change the photo. A layout is basically a composite of all the views on the screen. Uh, so all of the views together form the layout. And then an activity is the Java code that actually holds all, it holds it all together. It tells buttons what to do, it renders the layout, uh, so the, the activity is the Java part of this screen. So with that, let's make an Android app. So as I talked about before, this is the emulator. Uh, it's basically just an Android device that is embedded in software. So you can do everything you can on a normal phone here. You can launch apps, you can, uh, <clears throat> you can access uh, settings, etc. And what we're going to use this emulator for is we're going to build an app using Android Studio. So this is Android Studio right here. And I have an activity on the left here. So this part is Java code. And then I have the layout here on the right. And the layout is usually coded in XML, which is a very readable language. And you can see the views in the layout right here. I have a text view here, and I have a button here. So if I wanted to take this code and build it and install it on the emulator, I just have to hit the run button. And I can't see that because there's a zoom bar up. Okay, the run button. And it'll basically build the app, install it, and it'll run it on the device. So right now we just have a very boring app. It just has some random text and it has a button that says press this button. And if you press this button, it does absolutely nothing, which is not what we want. So what we want it to do is when we press this button, we wanted to show some text like, hello world. So the way you do that is within your activity, you wanna create some references to the views in the layout. So I want a reference to the button. 
and I want a reference to the text, which is called the text view. And the way that I grab the, the way that I reference the views in the layout is each one of these layouts has a little ID here. So the text views ID is text view, which is appropriate, and then the buttons ID is button. So I want to assign my button to the button ID. And it'll find, the, it's the, the method is called find view by ID. It'll look in this layout. It'll look for the view with the ID of button, and it'll provide you a reference to that. And then the text view will do the same thing. And we want to find the view with the ID of text view. So I want the button to, when I press it, to show hello world. So how do I do that? So I want to set an on click listener. And what an on click listener does is it handles a click. So when you click on the button, it'll tell it what to do. So on click, I want this button to change the view of the text to say hello world. So I can run it again. And it'll build. No install. So now when I click this button, hopefully it says hello world. So there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, you can change the background of the, uh, <coughs> of the activity to a different color, say. So in order to do that, I want to create an ID for the layout file, because right now it doesn't have its own ID. And we'll create a reference to that layout right here. And let's say I want to change it to red. So now when I click on the button, the on click listener will tell the text view to change the text to hello world. Then it'll tell the layout to change the background color to red. And hopefully it will do that. Cool. Uh, so there's uh, a lot of things we can do with this. Uh, we can even add an, an image into this view. So <clears throat> I can create an image view and we'll make it 300 pixels. We want the gravity to be centered. The gravity is basically the alignment of the view within the, within the layout. We want it to be centered. And we'll give it an ID. I'll call it image. So <clears throat> I have this little Snorlax uh, image right here. So I can just drag it in here. And it shows up in the project. And now I can create a reference to that image view. Sorry, 
it was just the image. Right. Well, and I can set the image when you click it to be a Snorlax. So we'll see if this works. <laughs> Not sure. There you go. So when you click this button, you'll uh, see the text view will change to hello world, the background will change to red, and then you'll see a Snorlax. So we built a very small hello world Android app. That is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I love that picture. Okay, done. great. Thank well, you. thank you, James. That's just gave you a sense of what it's like for, you know, people like James actually build Android apps. Um, all the ones that you use on your phone, whether it's Android devices or iPhones, those takes a lot, a lot of work. And they're these like professional softwares for you to, uh, to use to create a very, very complex and uh, impressive apps. So um, now we are going to have um, Andre to come up and show you how to build an app using Thunkable. Um, so I sent, we have sent earlier on um, a, um, a website, let me just type it in again. You can go in there and uh, uh, sign up for an account. The nice thing is, um, you know, with Thunkable, anyone can build an app like that in a few minutes. Of course, if you want to build something like uh, Google Photos or YouTube app or, uh, or TikTok, you have to learn a few more years to get to James level, but to do something simpler and a lot of fun, um, it takes uh, pretty little effort. So why don't we have Andre? Are you there, Andre? Yeah, so Andre is actually one of our teachers and uh, he is also a middle school teacher. So he teaches computer science um, in middle school. And uh, yeah, so we're very happy to have him come in today to demo us how to build an app in Thunkable. So I want everyone to be ready. When you build this, what you might want to do is on your computer, you have Zoom screen on one half of your screen, and then you open Thunkable on the other side so you can see what he's doing and then follow along, okay? And then if you have a phone with you, uh, if you don't have it, that's totally fine. But if you do have a phone with you, you want to download the Thunkable Live app as well, and then log in using the same account that you were using with the um, um, on the Thunkable website. Okay, so like Jesse said, my name's Andre. I'm a middle school uh, computer science teacher. Um, I do like to play the guitar and kind of have fun in my spare time. I do teach middle school kids how to program apps and use Scratch and program little microcomputers called microbits. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to create a simple app using Thunkable. Uh, what's great about Thunkable, you can create an app for any mobile platform, it doesn't matter. And so if you are not already there, you'll need to get to Thunkable. And hopefully you created an account and you just wanna click log in. So this is the Thunkable homepage and we will wanna click log in. So once you log in, this will be the uh, loading or the main page for your app. Uh, right here, we're gonna click create new app. Your button might be really big, but that's fine. Go ahead and click create app. And we're gonna name this app, Hello World. And we're not gonna worry right here about the category. We're just gonna click create. And that should open up the uh, Thunkable user interface. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time going over the user interface for Thunkable. At the top here on the left-hand side, you should see two tabs. This is called the design tab, and this is like how you would design your app. This would be like considered the viewer, and this, is be, and this would be what you would see in your app. Uh, you'll notice the different components here for screen one. We don't have any, any components or files, so we don't worry about that. But down here at the bottom, you can add different components to build your app. 
We have buttons, labels, uh, canvas. There's tons of components that you can kind of go through and look and look through whenever you have some extra time. This will be kind of like a demo of what your app will look like. And then over here, we'll have some different properties for the different components that you add. So for this app, we're gonna make a Hello World app and we're just gonna need two components. We're gonna scroll down here where we add components and we're gonna drag a button to the screen and just drop it and that should add the button. And then the next component we're gonna need is the label and we're just gonna drag the label on the screen too. That should add our label. You could change how these are ordered by simply dragging over here. If you want the button on top, you can drag the button on top. If you want the label on top, you can drag the label on top. I'm gonna leave mine just like this. So the next step we're gonna do, we're gonna add some code and our code is gonna be blocks. So we're gonna click the blocks tab. You'll notice we'll have different categories of blocks, but we're gonna start with the button one and we're gonna drag out this very first block. This is called a event handler. And basically what we want to happen is whenever we click the button, we want to change the label text to say, hello world. So I'll give you a couple more seconds to drag that button, click event handler out if you need, if you need it. Okay, Clean, can you click on button one again, just so that people see where it is? Button one. Yeah, click on the button one again. And we're gonna drag this very first one out. Okay, yeah, so this one on the very top here, you see here, button one. When you click on button one, there's a bunch of them. The very first one is the one you want to take. All right, so next we're gonna click on label one, which is above button one. And we're gonna drag the very first one. It says label one set text two. And we're just gonna drag that out and we're gonna snap it inside here, just like a puzzle piece. So that's gonna be label one, the very first block. So the next step we're gonna do, we're gonna change this text here from label. We're just gonna click here, we're gonna type in hello world. Or you can type in anything you want. Or anything uh, you want. Yeah, it can be hello word, it can be have a nice day, it can be whatever you want. Okay. Well, let's show it. Okay. So if you have a Talkable Live app, you can open that app on your device. If you didn't download that, that'll be just fine. You can hit live test and it should open up the uh, demo. And so if I click this button here, it should change the text to hello world. Okay, can you show again how to live test? Sure. So we're going to click live test right up here at the top right hand side. And if you have the app, it would open up on your mobile device, your phone or your tablet. If you're not connected with the live app, it's just going to, it should pop up on your screen. Then you can just press this button here. It says hello world. Hey, that's great. Okay. So if you have installed Thunkable Live on your phone, you would actually be able to do it on your phone as well. If you want to sign into your phone, you need to download this thing called um, Dunkable Live on your phone. And then when you click on live test, it actually should automatically show on your phone. Yay, it looks like lots of people were able to get it done. Awesome. Okay, so now here's a little challenge. For those of you who have already done Hello, word see if you can add a few more blocks to have it say three different sentences okay see if you can have it say three different sentences we're actually going to have a um, class um, offered to do small group classes to do mobile apps as well we're very very excited about it andre is actually the the, the main teacher that is working on the curriculum. So I don't know, Andre, if it's convenient for you to show a couple of other apps that they can potentially build. There's some really cool apps you can build with Dunkable. So this one is, is the image recognizer. 
So this app uses the picture and the camera, and I think I can live test it. I don't know if it'll let me take a picture, but we can see. And when I click button one, you probably need to turn on your. There we go. Yeah. So I took the picture and it says it's the man wearing glasses and looking at the camera. So you can actually go around and take pictures of things and it'll tell you what it is. So that was the image recognizer. Um, I also have Gets the Word. This is an app that uh, a couple of my kids made in class. This is, uh, we have recycling bins in town and it was really hard to tell if the bin was full. So they actually made this app and published it in the app store for both Google and Android. And it uses uh, databases. And so you'll go through and uh, the user can let us know if the bin is full or not. And the city uses the app to empty the bins. Cool. Awesome. That's pretty exciting. That's very exciting. Awesome. So the, um, you know, app is such a powerful thing with it on the phone you can um, bring it anywhere you want um i think with that um we are nearing the end of this but we want to we do want to answer some of the questions that you guys already have um i have a question about the um, coding um how much um coding do you use hi Ruben. uh you uh are you talking about to build an android app yes uh, you use a lot of coding. Uh, basically, everything in the app is written in either Java code or uh, XML for the layouts. So, a lot, 100%. Uh, but how many lines of code, for instance, are in a big, like sort of a commercial oh. app, for instance? Oh, how many lines of code? That's really interesting. Um, so, uh, lines of code doesn't necessarily mean the size of the app, because uh, uh, there can be apps with really, you know, um, really few lines of code that actually um, store a lot of data. Um, but I guess on average, uh, maybe in the tens of thousands or hundred, yeah, tens of thousands maybe. Yeah, you do need a okay. lot of. Them. Thank you. Well, that's a Thank good question. Reason. I feel like mastered scratch and this is getting a little easy for me. So like, what should I do? Okay. Uh, that's a really good question. I'm glad you feel this is easy. So you're definitely ready to do a lot harder mobile apps. Um, and uh, uh, we're just doing the first five minutes of Thunkable today. So obviously, uh, you know, um, it's just a beginning. A lot more cool things you can do Thunkable. Um, beyond Scratch, if you, you know, generally in case of other people have similar questions as well is beyond Scratch, a lot of times we suggest students to learn robotics, to learn uh, Minecraft coding, which are really, really cool. And then beyond that, you can learn Python. And beyond that, you can learn Java. And once you learn Java, you'll be ready to do some of the code like James were doing, um, because all the Android codings are actually Java based. But I'm glad you're thinking about how to keep getting better and better at this. Um, Scratch is a great place to start. And it's definitely, there are lots of things you can do beyond that. Do you admit that Apple is better than Android? Yeah, fantastic question. Um, I, I've actually uh, used Android for a long, much longer time. So I don't know as much about Apple. But I think they, have, they both have strengths and weaknesses, for sure. Um, Apple, uh, iOS is fantastic. Apple does a great job with that. Um, uh, and Android does as well. I think uh, there's positives and negatives to both. Yeah, definitely. I think some people like Android better and some people like Apple better. And the nice thing about that is because they're both pretty good. The engineers like James and, you know, and the ones in others in Google and Apple work really hard to try to make each of their system better and better. And nice thing is all of us get better apps to use and have better phones, which is awesome. So that's a nice thing to have two of them. How did you get interested in coding? That's a great question. So how did you, maybe Andre and James, you guys can both answer this. How did you get interested in coding? Hey, Monisha. Uh, 
So I actually, I think I took a computer class in second grade, I think. That was, uh, it was a little computer camp. And uh, back then it was basic. I think the language was basic. That shows how old I am. Um, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And ever since then, I, I've been kind of taking computer classes uh, through college. And uh, I just liked the idea of being able to create something from scratch. Uh, and it's uh, very, uh, it really takes um, a lot of work, but it's super rewarding. I actually got my master's in instructional design and technology. And that's when I first took my first coding class. So I learned how to do web design. And uh, just so happens my middle school here in the state of Kansas was one of the first to offer computer science as a class. And so I've kind of just delved in to kind of help kids learn. And I've kind of always wanted to learn since that moment. Yeah, that's the nice thing about coding. There's so many interesting things you can create and there's so many interesting things you can learn as well. Awesome. Well, with that, uh, we're finishing up today. Let me actually show you quickly. And, uh, and then because it's summertime, we're actually having some really nice uh, uh, sort of a specials for students who want to take these classes on all sorts of different options for you to have. Um, we also have some really cool programs coming up in the next couple of days, like actually next couple of weeks. We're doing a coding fair. Um, your parents should have received an email about it. In the coding fair, you are actually going to be the stars. You will come to show your program and to other students. So definitely um, and uh, hope to see you guys there. And then uh, we'll have some other secret programs that will be launching soon. So make sure you're parents and get the emails and then I hope to definitely see you guys again both in these larger classes and hopefully in some of the small classes we can actually see you and not just see you in chat all right with that um bye everyone it's great to have you here bye 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 thank you guys enjoy the rest of the weekend